Turn in your Bibles to Psalm 77. We're looking at Psalm 77 today, and it's still one of the Psalms of Asaph. Uh, we saw that began with Psalm 73. In fact, with this Psalm, there's a connection with Psalm 73 that I'll look at briefly. Uh, one thing that I've not really pointed out uh, with the Psalms, and I probably should have earlier, is that often the first verse of the Psalm gives the um, sort of the whole theme of the Psalm what is developed in the psalm, both its, you know, its beginning, its middle, and its sort of conclusion. So if we look at uh, verse 1 of Psalm 77, it says, I cried unto God with my voice, even unto God with my voice, and he gave ear unto me. And basically, that's, that's the message of the psalm. So the rest of the psalm is really the development of that theme. And you'll notice as you read all the psalms, pretty well, uh, most of them, are like that. They'll give in the first verse or the first two verses, sometimes in the first three verses, uh, the, the, the general like theme or thesis of the psalm. And so here the psalmist is crying unto the Lord and there's a, a sense of forsaking. He feels as if God has forsaken him and God has forsaken his people. Also uh, another interesting feature is that in verse 2 it's Adonai that is addressed, the supreme master. Uh, in the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. And the, the authorized version here is a little uh, not right in a way. It says, my sore ran in the night. Really, uh, it should be translated, my hands stretched out in the night without ceasing. There's nothing about a bleeding sore in the Hebrew, but it's, my hand was stretched out in the night without ceasing. In other words, he was seeking God all through the night and looking for him. We get this in verse 6, I call to remembrance my song in the night. I commune with my own heart, and my spirit made diligent search. So he's looking within, he's searching his own heart to find some solution for his, you know, his difficulties and his troubles. But ultimately, you know, uh, he has to look outside of himself and look unto the Lord, and he calls unto Adonai, the supreme master. And then he discovers in verse 13, Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Uh, who is so great? a God as our God. Now, if you'll recall from Psalm 73, uh, Asaph uh, was very troubled by the um, pro uh, prevalence of the wicked in the world and how the wicked prospered in the world. He couldn't understand that, but this said in verse 17 of Psalm 73, until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood their end. And what he's saying here in verse 13 of Psalm 77, thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. That's where we learn God's ways. Actually, some translations of this verse uh, translate it in this way. Thy way is according to holiness. That is true as well. It can be translated either way. Thy way is according to holiness. In other words, all God's dealings, all God's ways are in light of his holiness, of, of the holiness of his person. He'll never act outside uh, the, um, the holiness of his person of his holy attributes of righteousness, you know, of mercy, of uh, um, love, and all of the attributes uh, we think of God. In fact, God, more than an attribute of God, uh, the Bible says that God is love. But these are all known in the sanctuary. All God's ways are in accordance to his person, to his attributes, to his holiness, to his absolute separation from evil. And uh, he, one way or the other, he, he'll deal with evil. He'll either judge it, uh, the evildoers, or as we see in the cross, he judged it in the person of his son. And all those who receive that by faith are removed from underneath the burden of that judgment and have been translated into the kingdom of his dear son. And then we drop down to verse 18. It says, the voice of thy thunder was in heaven. The lightnings lighted the world the earth trembled and shook. And that's one of the things with, um, with uh, Asaph is that he looks forward to the future judgment of the world where, where God's righteousness will be known in the world through his judgment. Now this actually may be our, in reference to what God did at the Red Sea. He's looking back at how the Lord led uh, the people of God through the Red Sea on the dry land. We get this in verse 19. Thy way is in the sea and thy path in the great waters and thy footsteps are not known. Thou ledest thy people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. And so they were read, led through the Red Sea and into the wilderness. 
And um, But another way of understanding the verse is by way of application. Verse 19 is, Thy way is in the sea, thy path in the great waters. Thy footsteps are not known. In other words, that man generally cannot know the ways of God. The ways of God are not known to man, but they are known to his people, and they learn them in the sanctuary, in his presence, and, and in connection with the holiness of his person. So we can look at it both ways. We can see it as uh, historical, as God leading them through the uh, Red Sea on dry land uh, in deliverance from their enemies, but also we can apply it uh, spiritually that uh, as far as men are concerned, you know, they do not, they do not uh, discern spiritual things. Spiritual things are spiritually discerned, and they're only known to God's people in the sanctuary, in his presence, in the presence of his, his holiness. Now, I'm going to cheat a little, and I'm going to read um, uh, Hamilton, Smith, uh, Hamilton Smith's commentary on the psalm. And if you just bear with me, he says, The principles of the psalm can surely be applied with much comfort in a day of rush and confusion among the people of God. In the presence of much failure, the devil might seek to tempt the believer to think that God is indifferent to the trials of his people and has cast them off. Nevertheless, faith knows that no amount of failure can thwart the purposes of God's grace. Moreover, in the presence of God, we learn that God has a way in accordance with which he is acting for his own glory and for the blessing of his people. This is what I've been trying to bring out. We are encouraged to know that however great the confusion, yet God has a way through it all, a path through the wilderness by which to lead his flock. Good then for us to stretch out our hands, just as we had in the, in the first of the, the psalm where he, uh, Asaph stretched out his hands to the Lord all night. By which, to, uh, I'm sorry, good then for us to stretch out his, our hands to him, even though at times we may have to do so in the dark, in the night. So just be encouraged by the fact, your brothers and sisters, there is a way, uh, there is a path that the Lord leads his children through the wilderness. Let's follow him. Let's seek his leading and his guidance and learn his ways in the sanctuary.